Hello everybody and welcome to the shop. Um, this is uh, going to be an update on the uh, radio project that I did. Uh, I had a lot, a lot of positive feedback and for that I want to thank you. I really only had one uh, suggestion and uh, let me show that to you. The comment that I got was from Alan Melbourne and he asked, could you segment in a contrasting wedge so that when you turn the knob the line would show the increase in volume? Now with my radio knob, it doesn't stop, so there's there's no increase or decrease. It just turns infinitely until the radio reaches max volume, and then it just turns the opposite direction until the radio reaches uh, total dead volume or no volume, and just keeps turning. I think I'm going to take Alan's suggestion on these knobs. You can see the line on them, and when they are dead center, the line is up and down, and you can rotate the balance left or right, or you can fade from front to back. And I think what would be neat is if I went ahead and had a little piece of wood, a wedge of wood segmented in there so that uh, I could tell when the, the knob was straight up or the, the fade and balance were centered versus when I had moved it left to right or front to back. So great idea, Alan. Thank you for that suggestion. And I plan to incorporate that or attempt to incorporate that as I uh, do these, these particular knobs right here. I'd like to give a huge thank you to Peter Matthew. Now, Pete recently hit 1,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel, so he had a nice little giveaway, and Rockler kicked in some prizes, and I luckily won this, and I'm very happy about it. This is a lathe dust collection system. It's great for small lathes, for small turnings. I cannot wait to get this thing set up and try it on my lathe, because dust collection has been an issue of mine for a long time. Peter, thank you for the contest or not really a contest, thank you for the giveaway. And Rockler, I want to thank you. I don't know if anyone from Rockler will see my video, but I want to thank you for supporting Pete and for supporting other woodworkers, especially the young woodworkers. Um, I've noticed a lot of young woodworkers have been getting some Rockler merchandise, but thank you for kicking this in and thank you for shipping it to me. I greatly appreciate it, both of you. Thank you so much. I need to throw out a huge thank you to Michael Henry down in Louisiana. He sent me recently some sinker cypress. He sent me an awesome piece of spalted pecan and what we believe is pear. And one last piece. This is a piece of mahogany and it's absolutely gorgeous. Michael, thank you so much for, for the wood. I greatly appreciate it. A couple of days ago, someone sent me a link to a video about making herringbone pin blanks. And this tip was in there, and it's so incredibly cool, I just had to pass it along. Um, this is a piece of aluminum angle. It's a sixteenth of an inch thick by an inch wide by three foot long. I believe I paid about six dollars for it. And I picked up 50 clothespins for about two dollars. And what this guy did, which I thought was amazing, is he would take his segments for his herringbone pin blank, and he would lay one on the aluminum angle, and then he would close pin it down, making sure that it fit tightly against the bottom of the aluminum. Then he would take his second piece, he would put glue on the edge and lay it against the first piece and close pin it to the top half of the aluminum angle, making sure that it was nice and tight and lined up side to side. Basically, he just lined this entire piece of angle with little bits like this. And then once they dried, he was able to take them and put them together and build very quickly a herringbone pin blank. And I thought that was just the coolest idea and I just had to share it with you guys. I think I have two bucks in the clothespins, six bucks in the angle, so you know we're talking eight dollars total for this and I cannot wait to make another herringbone pin blank because I think this is going to make it incredibly easy and incredibly neat and I'll be able to use wood glue instead of CA and this will let it set up and hold everything nice and tightly together. I'm out in my main garage and over the weekend I put a little more effort into my cooler boxes. Now I'm not doing a video on these, uh, perhaps the next time I make them I will, but let me show you what, what they look like. I've built five of them. They are ready for stain and hardware. Let me get you a little closer to one of these. These boxes are made entirely of cedar fence pickets which are about $2 to $2.50 a piece depending on where you get them. Um, the top is finished, but it's not hinged yet. When it is hinged, it will lift up like this, and it will bring the top of the cooler with it. The cooler top will actually be mounted inside of this lid. Down inside the cooler, 
I used a little PVC fitting and a piece of rubber and I made myself a little uh, like an O-ring there so that it wouldn't leak. And on the outside of the cooler, I put a spigot so that you can just basically turn that and drain all of the liquid uh, from the melted ice right out of your cooler. Those cooler boxes are really fun to make. Uh, the nice thing about them is you can completely build them without making a single angled cut. Um, you could use butt joints on the top. Now I did go ahead and, and miter mine. Um, why I did that, I don't know, <laughs> but I just thought it looked kind of cool, so I did. But really, if you've got a contractor table saw uh, and you've got a chop saw, you've got everything you need to build them. There are a ton of great videos out on YouTube, so possibly I'll do one in the future. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to wait and see what the future holds. Um, I've got one last project that I want to show you guys that I'm working on. These are a couple of X-Acto knives. Now, my sons, both of my boys, are huge Lego movie fans, so they call them the Swords of Exact Zero. If you've ever seen the Lego movie, you'll know what that means. Um, I've got a number one and a number two, and what I'm going to do with these is a fellow by the name of Scott contacted me, and he carves with these X-Acto knives and uh, does some beautiful carvings. I saw a duck he's working on, or the head of a duck he's working on. Uh, beautiful. Uh, the problem is these knives are small and when you hold them in your hand for a long period of time carving, it, it fatigues your hand. So he's asked me if I can take these knives and make him a nice handle for them. I'm thinking something similar to what I did with the crochet hooks and then we can epoxy the, the knife into the handle. He'll still be able to remove the blades and change them out when they, when they uh, are dull. Um, he has an acrylic blank in mind that he wants to use. And uh, we're going to be talking some more about these, he and I are, and hopefully um, as this project comes together, I'll be able to get a video out for you on it. Those are pretty much all of my active projects. I have a ton of other projects on the books that I want to do, uh, but I'm trying not to start too many projects at once because then I'll never finish any of them. I will let you know that I'm going to take the next couple of days off away from the shop. It is spring break here in southern Indiana, and my kids are out of school, so I'm going to take a couple of days off work and just... Basically hang out with the kids, you know, do some fun local stuff. Uh, should be a great time. So I probably won't be posting a lot on Facebook about what's going on in the shop or anything like that. Uh, when I get back to the shop, possibly this weekend, I'd like to finish my shop logo. I think I showed that to you in an earlier video. Um, I'd like to work a little bit on these knives and uh, I'd like to get those cooler boxes stained. I'm kind of waiting for the weather to get up, you know, in the upper 50s to, to low 60s before I do that, uh, but that's kind of where I stand. So I want you guys to know that you are always welcome in my shop. Come back and see me again real soon. I hope you enjoyed the update. Have a great evening, and I'll see you real soon.